Festival Radio now. It's time to talk with Robin Hanbury Tennyson. Robin, um, the book, The Great Explorers. Now that's a large title and a large group, isn't it? Yes, I've done several books on exploration for Thames and Hudson. This was much the biggest and best. It's a lovely book. This is probably the last time I'll talk on this one. Uh, it's my third time at the uh, Wild of White Literary Festival. Uh, previously I've talked about books on rainforests and uh, exploration and things like that. But this one is a beautiful book that Thames and Hudson produced and it's now just gone in paperback and it was the paperback I'm talking about. Um, how do you decide what explorers to cover? Is it done in a chronological order? No, it was done by categories actually, polar, marine, uh, etc. Very, very difficult. I was given 40, I was told I could have 40 and you try and cut down the great explorers of the history into 40. Nobody asked me the question which usually I get asked after these talks, and why didn't you put so-and-so in, because he was much greater than the ones you've mentioned. Uh, it was, it's very difficult to choose, but I, I've chosen ones which I believe change the world, which is what explorers do. Uh, I know because I've read a about them, and I'm going to ask you this question now, because the Chinese were great explorers at sea, but it wasn't really documented, as far as I know. Only once. Chinese never looked out except in uh, the early part of the 15th century, 1420, when Cheng He, the uh, imperial eunuch, took the biggest fleet, possibly the biggest fleet in history, vast ships, ten times as big as what Columbus was to go in 30, 40 years later. And uh, he did make an extraordinary expedition right round the Indian Ocean, down the coast of Africa, almost certainly to Australia, almost certainly not across to America, and then back to China. And then that emperor died, and from then on, China has not looked outwards until now. <laughs> yes, very insular nation, but uh, until now, as you say. Um, OK, well, OK, you had to stay with 40 uh, explorers. Tell us about the top 10. Oh, the best ones are the ones about science. Uh, it, it, exploring is all about showing off and uh, conquest and other things like that to begin with. But the only thing that really matters is the scientists. They're my great heroes, Humboldt, Alfred Russell Wallace, uh, are the two that stand out above all others, who revealed the world to us. That's what I believe. I believe exploration is really about understanding the world and showing us what's there and, and interpreting it, which of course is what scientists do. And if it's tough and exciting and hairy and the process, so much the better. But that is not and shouldn't be the main purpose of exploration. Unfortunately, many past explorers, and I'm afraid one or two present ones, do tend to concentrate on the me, 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 aren't I tough side of things rather than the isn't the world an exciting place and if you really push it, you will discover something exciting about it. Uh, that's the Facebook generation, isn't it? It is. <laughs> that, you just mentioned Humboldt. Of course, um, these explorers have names of places and events uh, named after them, and often people don't connect them. I know the Humboldt Current, for yes. example. Um, there are many like this, aren't there, in Magellan Strait? Yes, there are. I never had anything named after me except a butterfly, <laughs> my proudest possession, which... Uh, uh, it's called Iphthema hambrii, and it was a butterfly that was discovered on my big rainforest expedition when we started the whole rainforest movement in Borneo. And I'm very proud to have had at least a butterfly named after me, even if I didn't have a mountain. <laughs> of course, the explorers, both fictional and non-fictional, over the years have always belonged to some very fancy club in London. Do you? Uh, I belong to the Travellers Club, yes, I do, and it's an excellent place to go and have a very, very good meal. And I do have quite a lot of meetings there, and I've spoken there quite a few times. I also belong to the Royal Geographical Society, of course, and the Geographical Club, which is a diamond club within that. Yes, you've got to belong. I live in Cornwall, and I never come to London if I can help it, but when I do, I go to one of those clubs. I'm referring, of course, rather jubilee to the Jules Verne. <laughs> Fictional then. Yes. Well, uh, I thought that all took place. I thought he set off, had the bet for the 80 days around the world, was in the Travellers Club, was it not? It was, yes. Um, who's the greatest then? Who's the greatest explorer? It depends what context you're talking in, but I think Alfred Russell Wallace. I think I probably would put him as the greatest, um, not just because he was. Uh, discovered more species and wrote about it and actually came up with the theory of uh, evolution uh, 
and told Darwin about it, and, and, and they, they published jointly on that. But because he was extraordinarily tough, I mean, what these people went through, and I mean, it depends what you define great as. I mean, some of the polar Arctic ones, I don't do cold. I have such an admiration for people who do. I do not want to live inside a deep freeze for months on end. But Wally Herbert, I would put, as, another, as the greatest of the polar explorers, because he did this extraordinary journey across the polar ice cap, uh, which he would have been much more famous about had not Neil Armstrong got to the moon very shortly, a couple of few weeks after he arrived, and suddenly everybody was obsessed with outer space, which I find somewhat of a waste of time. Well, fame's a fickle thing, isn't it? Yes, but also I, I do think exploration, like everything else in life, needs to have a justification. It needs to be... Uh, you need to do it for a purpose, and uh, the people I admire are the ones that did, rather than the ones who were just showing off. Well, the title says The Great Explorers. Um, it's almost in past tense that exploration is still going on, isn't it? Oh, it's only just beginning. We have no idea how this planet works. The, just as space exploration through the use of massive telescopes is, is penetrating further into space, so microscopes are penetrating further into the infinity, the greater infinity of inner space, and discovering that you have more life forms on your eyelashes than there are people on the planet. And not a lot of people know that. And these are real interesting things that should be studied. And every cubic centimetre of soil is heaving with life forms which we know nothing about, let alone affected have on us, on other species, on symbiotic relationships. The world is a fascinating place which we haven't got a clue how it works. That's where future exploration should take place. Robin, very nice to talk to you. And um, it looks like lots of pictures, which is lovely to see. Uh, possible documentary here? Uh, not on that one. Too many other people doing it, doing it better than I would. <laughs> Best of luck with the book. Thank you. Thank you very much. Where has this girl who promised she was buying it and said she was going to come back? Oh, she's gone. Oh, there she is. She's come. Can I, just, can I just show you? Can yes. you just show the book to her? Yes. And just to show. Well, th this is the one that actually... This is the one you're actually talking about. This is the one I'm actually talking about. This is the old one. The Perfect. last copy. Is it? Yes. This, this is of the hardback, but this one is very much available. Looks very nice. Okay, so thank you very much. Available at all good bookshops.